DEA bot, the very bot, the very spaghetti code that I made myself, a highly customizable DEA cache system, and a really easy way to set it up and get it running so you can host this bot yourself and customize all the settings you would possibly want. So first off, to be able to run this, unfortunately this is only going to be for Windows Guide, you're going to need Community 2017 of Visual Studios, and when you install it, you have to choose the .NET Core. In the installer, there's going to be a bunch of choices of things that you can add to Visual Studios 2017. All you got to do is check .NET Core. Once that's done, all you got to do is go on the official RealBlazed slash DEA GitHub, where there is the full source code of DEA. Then you just go make sure you're on the master branch because the development one is not always stable and sometimes it won't even work. You download the master branch as a zip file. Now once you download that you have to unzip it. You have the unzip files here which is the exact same thing as you had here. And after you have the Visual Studios 2017 community version including .NET Core, you can open up the solution file for DEA. Now once you have this quite running, quite good and gold, you might think, okay, that's all I gotta do, I just gotta fucking press the run button and it should work. But if you try to press the run button and start it, well this is exactly what's going to happen. First it's gonna compile, it's gonna work, it's gonna load up, but then right away it's gonna say error while loading up credentials.json. You gotta fix this and restart it. The file doesn't exist. You need to have the file in your source file. So, let's go into source files. And here you can see there's only the credentials example, but there's in the credentials file itself. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rename this. We're going to remove the example part, and then we'll enter that. So now what we can do is we can either open this with Notepad++, it'd be preferable, or Atom. Now here you have all the stuff in front of you where you would need to put the token. So let's go get that right now. So the token is obviously referring to the bot token, so you're going to have to go on discordapp.com, developers, my apps. And then you can create a new one. I already have this testing bot that I use. So here, once you have a bot, normally you'd go through a creation process. You have to click create bot user if you were to add a new application. But in this case, I already have one. So once you have this, you're going to have a create user button. You click that. You get the token for this bot. So now once you have the token, you can just copy paste that. Then you come back to your credentials.json. You're going to put in your token right here, right where it says token. Now for the owner IDs. This is where you're going to put the ID of every single person that can use the bot commands. Which means you could blacklist other users with this. You can make the bot leave certain servers. You can set the playing of the bot. Like for example, here it's use help, but if I were to do set game testing, then what it would do is it set the game of DEA to testing. Now I'm going to set this back, but it's just one of the example of the bot owner commands. So that's where you're going to put your ID. To get your ID, you're going to need to go in user settings, appearance, and then right here, you're going to have to make sure developer mode is on. You're going to have this checked. So then whenever you send a message or do anything, you can right click yourself, copy ID. Now that you have your own user ID, you can simply just put this in the array, if you want to add more, then you just add a comma and add a bunch like this. For now, we're only just going to put my ID. Once that's done, you're going to need a MongoDB connection string. This is to connect to your database to save all the stuff like the cache and all this. Like whenever I have my balance, all this data is stored in a database. It's actually quite simple. You can set up a free database online using MongoDB. Now, the site that I use is mlab.com. You can come right here go to sign up. They let you have free accounts with 500 megabytes of storage, which is way more than enough. You might not think that's a lot, but for simple data, for simple numbers to be saved in it, it is practically nothing. So obviously we're going to make an account. I like to use tempmail.org for instant emails that you can just use to sign up with anything. And there we go. Now it says your email address has not been verified. This is where the temporary email comes in. Now I just got to click the simple email verification. Now that we have the account verified, all we have to do is just create a new MongoDB deployment, which is for the database. So once we're in here, you're just going to choose single node, use Amazon servers because they're the most reliable. Now you're going to choose the sandbox single node one, which is free. All the others are pretty expensive and you'll keep this at 3.2. And for the name, we're just going to put DEA testing. Now that we created this, our database is fully created. What we can do is we just click on it. Now this is where you have your connection string. You're going to copy paste this exactly. Go back to your credentials.json 
and right where it says MongoDB connection string, you paste that in. So now right here you have DB user and DB password. You're going to replace this with a database user, not the one you used on this account, but one you're going to add to this specific database. So once you're on your database page, you go to users, add database user, let's just call this admin123123. 123 do not click make read only because then DEA will not be able to make any modifications. Has to be like so, not a read only user. Now the user has been created. You're going to replace where it says DB user with admin because that's what we named it. And then replace the password with 123 because that was the password. Now here, the name of the database is DEA testing. And we're also going to have to put the database name right here, DEA testing. Now that this is all done, we have basically everything set up. We have the MongoDB database ready to be used with the account, the correct database name, and the token for the bot. So now you just got to save this, go back to Visual Studios, and you can run. Now, as you see, it's successfully running. It tested the MongoDB connection and it worked. Now it ran the event, and this bot is already in a few servers, so that's why people are using commands already. You can see all the timers that are being run, the auto and mute reset temporary multiplier, and of course, words of wisdom from inside right here. Now that this is all running, I'm going to show you guys how to do loads of customization on DE. If you want to change a lot of the data, a lot of the functionality of DE, it's quite simple. All you're going to have to do is go into common, go into data, and then you click on config. In config, this is all the data that is stored in. Basically, every single constant number that's used within the code is all here. The min char length is the minimum amount of characters before you get money by talking in chat. Here you can see like the maximum raid percentage, which is 20%, max raw percentage, 20%. You can see how long the cooldowns last, like whore cooldown, two hours, jump cooldown, four hours. You can see the amount of cash required for the bully command, 50 times two command, rob, steal, jump. Anyway, if you guys have any issues setting this up, all you have to do is just comment down below. I'll reply to your comment as soon as I can, explaining how to fix your issue. This is all I have for you guys today. Spaghetti signing off.